Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, Santa Claus said as he walks into Dead Rabbit Radio Command. Today I have two stories. <laughs> he sounds like a horse. He sounds like a Mr. Ed. Today I have two creepy stories for you. First off, what happens when a group of young boys wandering through the forest find a mystery? Oh, 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 not a mystery like I like to leave. Like, where'd those cookies go? And then we take a look at a truly terrifying story. Is it possible that the upcoming video game Grand Theft Auto 6 will be powered by the souls of the dead. Ho ho ho! Today on Dead Rabbit Radio. Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Dead Rabbit Radio. I'm your host, Jason Carpenter. I'm having a great day. I hope you guys are having a great day too. I wish you a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, or just a fine winter day to you i hope you guys are having fun stuff no matter what you're doing we got a lot of stuff to cover today but first off what about that awesome theme music we just had the hombres de la cebola the onion men dropped a christmas track isn't that dope they did a halloween track a while back here we have a little christmas track for you hope that got you in the mood And look at this amazing photograph. (laughs) I got an actual photograph of Santa Claus. Can you believe it? That is not me in a Santa Claus suit two, three years ago. And you know it's not me because I'm sitting next to a dog. And anyone who's listened to this show for a while know that although I love dogs, dogs tend not to love me. Um, I'll put that episode episode in the show notes. But yeah, actually one year I had a buddy who was a Santa Claus and he did pet photos and he couldn't get a weekend free and they had all this stuff planned so i dressed up as santa claus and for the next four or five hours giant dogs stood right next to me it was quite chilly the dog in that picture he's not giant. You're like, Jason, that's not a giant dog it's a medium-sized dog yeah but they all looked big to me but someone who is not afraid of dogs someone who might be the real santa himself Running into Dead Rabbit Radio Command, everyone get on your feet and give it up for our newest Patreon supporter, Perry Stratner. Woohoo, yeah, we ha <laughs> is all walking on in with a big bag of goodies. Woohoo, yay, we now those are just for him. Those aren't presents for the rest of us. Perry, you're gonna be our captain, our pilot this episode. If you guys can't support the show financially through the Patreon or the merch store, or anything like that, just help spread the word about Dead Rabbit Radio. That helps out so much. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone you know. Dead Rabbit Radio is your favorite paranormal show. Perry, I'm going to go ahead and start off by tossing you... Oh, dude. Is there a rabbit term that starts with an S? Maybe we can have like a... Like some sort of sled or sleigh. Oh, never mind. (laughs) I'm just tossing the keys to the Jason Jalopy with Christmas lights on it. We are leaving behind Dead Rabbit Radio Command. Perry, drive us all the way out to Ohio. We were just actually in Ohio last episode, last week, right? That crazy time loop story. I had a lot of fun with that one. I got a possible update on Friday's episode later this week. But we're headed back to Ohio. It's summertime. It's the year 2000. And we're about to meet a trio of friends. We're going to call them Mark. He's the main dude. And his two friends, Jerry and Nick. And Mark says, listen, man, we grew up in this town in Ohio. We knew it like the back of our hand. When you grow up in a small town, you kind of you kind of seen everything by the age of five. You're like, ah, oh, it's nothing new. And he said there was this uh, wooded area right on the border of town where we spent a lot of our childhood. And whether we were playing hide and go seek or... Us and all the neighborhood kids are playing Capture the Flag, running around. I got the flag. Woohoo! Running over branches and stuff like that. Squirrels are diving out of the way as you're running around with a colored cloth. He goes, we knew this forest pretty well. Well, at least they thought they did. And that's kind of the question that pops up here. He said, during summer of 2000, one day me and 
Jerry, we said, hey, let's go hiking. Mark goes, we were walking for about 30 minutes. Not really in any given direction, just kind of walking around through the woods. And then Mark sees something, and he's like, Jerry, what in the world is that? And Jerry's looking, and he goes, what in tarnation is going on here? And they see this line, this perfect line of eight pine trees in a row. They had never been there before. They had never seen this on any of their adventures. And behind the pine trees was a house. Mark said it looked like a small white house. It looked fairly new. Didn't look like an old-timey Goldilocks house. Didn't look like a squatter's home. It wasn't in disrepair. It had a roof. It looked like it was a well-maintained house that anyone would live in, except for a squatter. But you know what I mean? Like, well, they could live in a nice house, too. My point is, is that it wasn't a shack. They had never seen it before. They had never seen this line of trees before. And Mark was thinking, because they've thought about a lo- they thought about it a lot over the years. He goes, we didn't see a road. We didn't even see a trail leading... To this house, he goes, how in the world could they have built it without a road? Like, you would have been huffing materials through the forest, (laughs) setting it down, building a house, come back, get more materials. And so he's like, there was no way that this house could have been built out here. Mark and Jerry are looking at this house. And all of a sudden, this weird feeling what they can only describe as being uneasy they feel like they're not supposed to be here they get this general sense of uneasiness mark and jerry feel the same way so they leave they're wondering about it they, they've never seen it before but they just feel something's off so they go home a couple weeks later mark is over at nick's house they're playing the ps2 Nick goes, you know, this is kind of weird, man, but, um, you know, we're always playing in the forest. And Mark's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick goes, yeah, dude, it's super weird. The other day I was walking out in the woods nearby and we've been in those woods a hundred times more. But the other day I found this line of trees. Mark's like, what? <laughs> like he's Okay, now he's going to pause Spyro the dragon. Looks over at Nick, and Nick's like, yeah, I was out there, and I saw this line of eight perfectly spaced pine trees. And on the other side of them was this white little house. And it wasn't like some old shack. He goes, I don't know when it was built or how it got there or anything. We've never seen that before. But as I was standing out there and I was looking at this house, all of a sudden I started to feel like, now i got to bounce. Like, this is not a cool place for me to be right now. Something's off. Not evil, not wrong, just off. It was kind of creeping me out. So I went home. Mark goes, dude, me and Jerry, we didn't tell you about this. Me and Jerry, we hang out on our own sometimes. Me and Jerry were walking around in the woods a couple weeks ago, too. And we saw the same thing. And we got the same feeling. So we left as well. And they decide, between Mark, Jerry, and Nick, they go, let's go explore that place. Let's go figure out what's going on over there. So later that weekend, they all get together and they say, it's hiking time, guys. They take off into the woods and they're headed right towards that house. It's a 30-minute walk, give or take, right? They get out there. Well, I think we turned to left. We didn't walk in a straight line. Yeah, yeah, I think we... Nick, do you remember which way you went? Yeah, I... Well, you know, I just was kind of wandering around in the woods like, okay, well, let's just keep going. Let's... Well, guys, I think we've already searched here. Where is that? They're walking around the woods. 30 minutes turns into about five hours of walking. 
They never found it again. No eight pine trees in a row. No white house sitting in the middle of nowhere. Nothing. Mark said to this day, 23 years later, just thinking about that experience still creeps him out. I love stories like this because I do love the mundane paranormal things and the close calls. The listening to your gut stories. Because this house, I mean, you could argue a house being built in the middle of the woods, that's not impossible. Obviously, like Abraham Lincoln built a house in the middle of nowhere. You could do that. You could build a house in the middle of nowhere without machinery. They didn't say, they didn't say it was made of Lincoln logs, but you know what I mean. That in and of itself is not paranormal. A nice house in the middle of nowhere, that's not paranormal. But they came to this place that they could tell... They'd been through this area a hundred times before, probably even more. They'd never seen this before. They see this house, and then they listen to their gut. I don't want to be here anymore. And they turned around and they went home. And the thing is, is if we don't listen to our gut in these type of situations, you go into the house. Or you cross that threshold of those eight pine trees. Because whatever this was, that is not a real place. This place appeared out of nothingness and disappeared into nothingness. So by walking through that line of trees, would they have ended up where the house originally came from? Was the house... A dimensional rift? Like an accidental thing. One day a guy in some other reality was driving home. He's like, ah, oh, where's my house? He shows up. There's just a bunch of trees in his lot. What? Oh, man. And I have to finish the Johnson account tonight. And he's all sending. He builds a tree house and he's doing his paperwork. I think that's not the case. My read, and assuming this story is true, right? I found it online. To be fair, I found it online by a guy who goes by the name... Burn Hermit 420. But I did look through his posting history and there was nothing else like this. And that's kind of one of the gauges I use. Because who just makes up one single story and everything else they're talking about like Warhammer figurines or their favorite tennis player or whatever. I don't think it's an interdimensional... If this story is true, I don't think it's an interdimensional rift because that would almost mean it was on accident. I feel like the sense of uneasiness comes more from the malignant presence that existed in the area. Super interesting story. It's possible that there was some sort of evil entity disguising itself as a house. I don't think it caught anybody. That's the thing about the mundane stories. Mark doesn't say, oh yeah, and then eight kids went missing that summer. We had a game of Capture the Flag. And they were never seen again. These things might just pop up from time to time. But imagine if a group of teenagers stumbled across this. I think they'd be more likely to go in. But you notice a group of teenagers missing. A hermit, a burn hermit, traveling through the woods. Some homeless guy moving from town to town. Stumbles across the nice little house in the middle of nowhere. Not only is he more likely to walk up to the house to see what is in there, because it might be a place to crash for a while. It's abandoned. That's spectacular. Not only would he be more willing to go and check on the house in the middle of nowhere, if he went missing, no one would know. Perry, I'm going to go ahead and toss you the keys to the Carpenter Copter. We are leaving behind Ohio, but we will return on Friday's episode because I got an email from Leyland, a Patreon supporter who has more information or a really interesting read on our time loop story from last week, but we'll talk about that later this week. Perry, I'm going to go ahead and toss you the keys to the Carpenter Copter. We are leaving behind Ohio. Fly us all the way out to Vice City. 
I recently got this story sent to me by a longtime supporter of the show, Ampus Allen. And strap in, guys, because this one <laughs> this one gets weird. It's one of those stories that I love that combines the real life events with court documents and things that we can prove with one of the most bizarre conspiracy theories we've taken a look at in a while. And while this conspiracy theory is new, I'm going to take credit because I predicted this back in episode 493 of Dead Rabbit Radio. But let's go ahead and get started. We're in Vice City. Dun 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 dun. dun driving a race car. <clears throat> breaking, breaking really fast. You know, the airbag goes off. Your nose is all busted. I was like, get out. The cops are after us. And I, I'm picking which gun I want to use. <laughs> Jason, wait a second. Is this some weird power fantasy you have? I'm like, kind of. And I'm just shotgunning cops. <laughs> And you see the little stars above my head going up. And I'm like, it's three stars, guys. Let's run. We're running. Helicopters are flying over the city. You're like, oh, my God, this is absolutely insane. And I pull you into a building and I go, OK, if we wait, if we wait here for five minutes, the cops will forget that I shotgunned a bunch of people. We're in Vice City, the location of Grand Theft Auto 6. New game that's going to be coming out. I think it's 2025. It's based on Miami, 1980s Miami. At least that's what the original GTA Vice City was. I think this is kind of an updated Miami, more of like a Rick Ross Miami. Less 1980s vibe, more modern vibe. But look at my watch. A couple more minutes. (laughs) A couple more minutes before the police forget my rampage. We're actually in Vice City. It's pretty dope, huh? Kind of walking around. We happen to hide in a hotel. And I'm like, hey, bellhop. Uh, you guys got a room in here? You got to <laughs> get super suspicious. You're like, oh, is this some weird elaborate pickup game Jason has? Oh, you know, <laughs> that old trick, murder a bunch of police and then take you to a hotel room. And the bellhop turns and looks at us and he goes, <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> get me out of here. <laughs> but as he's saying that, He's like getting us keys for a room and he's turning pretty robotically and he's putting them down on the table. He gives us each a key. We got separate rooms. Don't worry. And he's moving through all of these pre-programmed movements that an NPC would in a video game, a non-player character. But as he's walking around, kind of stiffly walking around the front counter to pick up our bags, (laughs) our bags full of automatic weapons, Oh my God, where am I? Where am I? You, you, you gotta, you gotta tell my wife. You gotta tell my kids. I just wanna go home. Where, where am I? He's carrying our bags to the elevator. This story's nuts, dude. So it started. You guys know I'm a huge true crime fan. I actually read more true crime than paranormal stuff a day, which is shocking for the amount of paranormal stuff. I love true crime. This article just broke earlier this week. This happened. This is, and even the, even the real part's going to sound totally insane. So back in September 2022, there was this kid named Arion Kurt, Kurt Oz. Arion Kurt Oz. He's 18 years old, and he was a hacker extraordinaire. He ran with this group called Lapsus, but he was doing a lot of this stuff on his own as well. What they were doing is they were hacking huge companies like Uber and NVIDIA and then taking a bunch of information and then holding it for ransom. You have to pay us like $5 million or we're going to release all of this stuff. Now, Uber would be mostly people's like credit cards, personal information, things like that, the customer base. With NVIDIA, it was like stuff they were working on, proprietary software. It's a computer company. And he ends up getting arrested for that. And this all is in Britain. This kid's from Britain. They arrest him for that, and then he gets out on bail. 
And while he's out on bail, this is, again, the details don't start adding up right in the beginning. While he's out on bail, he's placed in a hotel with police protection outside of the hotel. I don't know what the system is like in Britain and America. When you bail out, you, they, they give you conditions like you have to stay at home or you can't leave the state or whatever. I've never heard of you're out on bail, you're quote unquote free until the trial, but then the police are going to put you under watch. But that's what happened in Britain. He gets out on bail. He's in a hotel room. And he goes, you know what? Being in a hotel room is pretty dope. I love living in hotels. I'm a straight Zach and Cody kid myself. Arion goes, dude, you know what would be dope? <laughs> more hacking than thing that I'm currently being tried for. I I'm going to do more of that. So using the Amazon Fire Stick that's plugged into the television at the hotel room. A, a cell phone that he just bought and a keyboard and mouse, he's able to use just those four devices to hack into Rockstar Games. And I think he might have held him for ransom as well. I don't know if he was doing this one for a lark just because he was bored. He ended up releasing 90 different videos of Grand Theft Auto 6 footage. They just released the official trailer earlier this month in 2023. But he found all these videos and, and he released them all online while he was on bail for hacking. Okay. Crazy story, crazy kid, hackers trying to get money. This kid just leaks all these videos. Those were his crimes. Hacking, ransom, hacking into Rockstar, releasing 90 videos. Think now what an appropriate sentence would be for this young man. He is 18, legally an adult. What do you think an appropriate sentence would be for an 18-year-old hacker? December 21st, 2023. This is all popping up in the news. December 21st, 2023. He was sentenced to life. And to make it even worse... Because, listen, there are people who are far worse. Murderers, rapists, all sorts of evil people who do even worse stuff. I'm not going to go into detail. You're like, oh, it is Christmas Eve, my friend. They don't get life. He didn't just get life. He got life in a prison hospital. Which, some people say, is nice because you get to sit on your bed and play checkers and stuff like that. They dope you to the gills. It is not, you would rather be in prison than a prison hospital. Sentenced to life in a prison hospital until the doctors deem him safe to be in society. And you know who made the determination to put him in the prison hospital? The doctors. So the same people who chose to lock you up for the rest of your life are the ones who get to choose when you get to leave. He was considered, quote, a high risk to the public, unquote. I remember reading that in the news and I go, there has to be something more here. This doesn't make sense. And I started looking into this. Twelve offenses in total. Blackmail, fraud, six charges under the Computer Misuse Act. What? Okay. Still not worthy to be life in a prison hospital, a secure hospital. This is not just a cool, I'm going to sit and watch television all day long. It's a prison for the mentally unwell, the mentally ill, the mentally insane. So you go, well, Jason, yeah, that's weird, but like, is that... That had to be what the jury came to. That had to be, you know, you have a trial and sometimes the sentences can be insane. They didn't have a trial. The doctors said that he was, this is their terminology, not mine. The doctors said that he was so severely autistic, he could not be put to trial. He could not understand the proceedings against him. Your Honor, it would actually be cruel 
to take someone with this level of autism and subject them to a trial. So you're telling me the dude who can hack, and I know there's, I know there's a spectrum and I know there's all sorts of differences, but a guy who can be part of a hacker group for a period of time, hack into Rockstar's computers using a fire stick and a cell phone, can't comprehend a trial? The court, because they did have hearings for this, the court was told that he had, quote, been violent while in custody with dozens of reports of injury or property damage, unquote. You're like, Jason, so he's like beating people up. Maybe he's stabbing people in the eye with an Amazon fire stick. He's violent. He's a danger to society. I'm going to give you a little journalism trick because that's what my background is. That's what my degree was in. We state the worst thing first. And if there's nothing that is quote unquote worse, we just leave it vague. If I told you reports of injury or property damage, you may imagine him beating up guards. You may imagine him like smashing televisions and like setting his mattress on fire. But that's so vague. Doesn't re- dozens of reports of injury, that could be me stepping on your shoe. Or that could be me putting your eye out with a scalpel. But here's the thing, if I put your eye out with a scalpel, it would say... While he was incarcerated, he attacked a intern and put their eye out with a scalpel. If there's no specifics to list, we just try to make it sound as bad as possible. Dozens of... Re- okay, name one of them. Tell me one of them. He also, quote, continued to express the intent to return to cybercrime as soon as possible, unquote. Oh, no. Cybercrime? Listen, I get it. People, I have very, very low tolerance for thieves. I don't like all this cybercrime nonsense out there. I I get it. It's not great. And when you're targeting grandmas and, you know, taking their mortgages away from them and doing all of this stuff, all this identity theft, it's awful because it's impacting real people. That totally sucks. I'm not going to deny that. Rockstar, they said, listen, it costs us about $5 million to clean up the mess this kid made. And a bunch of, they said like a couple hundred man hours to, to a couple hundred man hours and around $5 million to clean up the mess. You can, you can put that there. And yeah, that sucks. I'm not saying that all corporations need to get cyber crimes all the time either. It's not worth life. <laughs> Whether you're pro cyber crime or anti cyber crime, it's not worth life. And if an 18 year old kid tells me I'm going to be a cyber criminal until the day I die, I'm not going to put you I'm not going to put you in prison for life, and I'm definitely not going to put you in a prison hospital or a secure hospital or a mental asylum for life until the doctors who put you in there are the ones who determine when you get out. For comparison, there was a co-defendant that was arrested around there. I guess there's a bunch of cases going on right now, but Arion was kind of his own thing. He was doing his own thing, but he also, for one of these cases, he had a co-defendant, a 17-year-old, so they don't release their name. 17-year-old was also hacking, was also doing ransom stuff. Got an 18-month community sentence. So basically, you know, walking around helping old ladies pick up trash. He's banned from using VPNs. So that was his sentence. And this other kid was also accused of stalking two women. Stalk two women, commit the same crimes as Arion, get 18-month community service. No jail, nothing. Arion, life in a mental hospital. So... What in the world's going on here? And what does any of this have to do with this poor bellhop carrying our bags away? Everything I just told you is just a absolutely bizarre true crime story. There is 100% more going on behind the scenes. Ampus Allen, I was going to tell that story on my TikTok channel. I think it's super interesting, but I cover mostly my true crime on my TikTok channel, my YouTube shorts. But Ampus Allen goes, bro, (laughs) Ampus Allen goes, dude, you got to check this out, man. Look at this conspiracy theory. 
involving Arion. Back on episode 493, that episode was called Did Jeffrey Epstein Escape into Cyberspace? And that was the theory that before Epstein died, like long before, he wasn't in jail trying to do this, but he went to jail for the child sex stuff. And then he got back out. And at this point, everybody knew what he was up to. That's why Bill Gates is in so much trouble, because he was hanging out with him after he had gotten out of jail the first time. Anyways, Epstein was pouring a lot of money into virtual reality and artificial intelligence. He was trying to create this vivid new technology for virtual worlds. And I said in that episode, is it possible that he was trying to create this virtual world for himself that he ended up also escaping into, uploading his consciousness into this virtual world where now he has virtual avatars based on all sorts of young kids, young girls, so he could basically molest them in cyberspace forever. And it's a weird sci-fi ending. I kind of laid out like how it was possible and you would have to be a maniac like Jeffrey Epstein to want to do something like that, to create a virtual brothel just for him. Even though his body may be dead, he may be uploaded into this realm and continuing to molest kids for <laughs> like Jason this is Christmas time come on man <laughs> you're imagining the lawnmower man flying around with Jeffrey Epstein's face well anyways there was an account um, there's this guy named friendly dude 980 I didn't even know this was a subreddit thank you Ampus Allen for sending it over it's called occult conspiracy this is exactly what it sounds like it's conspiracy theories that deal with the occult this guy, friendly dude 980 he puts this forward. He goes, what Arion found, the reason why he's locked up in a hospital for the rest of his life, isn't because of the ransom. It's not because of the hack. It's not even because of the quote-unquote personal injuries. It's because when he hacked into the Rockstar servers, he found how they are powering their NPCs. We're already hearing a lot of this stuff about AI-generated dialogue in video games. The predictive language program, so you can be playing a video game, and now it's all pre-planned, right? I'm walking through a neighborhood, and the guy's like, get your trash out of here. And then I follow him for a bit, and he's like, see ya, man. And then I follow him a little bit longer. Get your trash out of here. We all know that. The limitation of the hardware, pre-programmed. Now they're talking about using AI in there. So you, each time it will change, the dialogue will change depending on what's going on in the world and what you are saying to them. And it will be completely original because that's the way these AI programs work. I don't know if that's been specifically said that Rockstar is going to do that in GTA 6. I would be surprised if they didn't. I'd be surprised if most of these big budget games don't start doing that. You have your quest givers, but then just for the people walking down the street, imagine how amazing it would be mind-blowing. You're walking down the street and you can have a conversation about the weather in the game with the character, depending on the weather. I mean, that's, there's more exciting stuff you can do with your time. But let's say you're, you just did a huge crime spree. And then you're on the other side of the town and you're kind of disguised and they're like, oh my God, can, there 52 cops died. 52 cops died in the last 10 minutes. And that's how many police officers you shot. It'd be amazing, right? If we can do all this stuff. And that's kind of the path where I see them going. I don't know if GTA 6 has specifically said that. I'd be surprised if they didn't. But the conspiracy theory, let's put on our conspiracy caps, is that that is not what's going on. And I could argue that this may not be what's going on with any of these AI programs. Chat GPT could be the same thing. The conspiracy theory is this, is that those are real human souls trapped in the machine. It's a digital prison. 
they're putting these souls into the machine. And the goal isn't actually to... <laughs> the goal isn't that Rockstar needed a bunch of human souls. So they had to go shopping. That's not what it is. Let me lay this out for you. The way that it's put down is that... This is the theory. If you take a human while they're still alive... And you're able to lower their vibrational level. Basically, their last moments are nothing but fear and pain and sorrow. You can lower their vibrational level enough to capture their soul and upload it to cyberspace. Upload it to some sort of digital place, a digital prison. You couldn't do it that to a person just going about their day, they get hit by a car, even if they're like sad, because obviously you'd be sad. But you couldn't do it. You actually have to take a series of steps. This leans a lot on the whole adrenochrome theory as well, that you need to torment people before they die. So their adrenaline spikes and then you suck it out from the back of their brain. You have to lower someone's vibrational level. Uh, the way that it's laid out is that in China... The Uyghur concentration camps in China. You already have stories of having their hair all shaved off and sold as wigs in other countries. Slave labor. Uh, brainwashing. All of these stories have come out of China over the past 10, 20 years. Organ harvesting. We've heard that when political prisoners are killed, their organs are harvested because it's a lucrative market. Everyone needs a liver. But this theory is even worse. It's that using Uyghurs, who, if you don't know what a Uyghur is, you're like, what? You're like pause, I gotta look this up. Uyghur is a, a population base of Muslims that live in further north, I think it's like the northwest of China, somewhere up there. And they're getting, China goes, we're not doing anything to them. We're not doing anything at all. And the Uyghurs are like, yeah, you are. But I mean, that, that comes down to sources and things like that. But Anyways, this source says that they're not just selling their hair. They're not just selling their organs after they're dead. He goes, they're actually keeping these Uyghurs alive and removing the organs as needed. So they would take out one of your kidneys but keep you alive until someone needed a heart. Because otherwise that heart could go bad. So you would piecemeal someone out while keeping them alive. It's the plot for Crank 2. I don't know how feasible it is over time, but... You piecemeal them out while they're still alive. And while you're doing that, it's, I mean, imagine sitting on an operating table and someone removes your kidney and puts it in a bag and leaves. And you're like, uh, and you know, <laughs> you feel a little more emotional than that. You're like, oh, oh just one kidney. Boo hoo. You got two of them. Watching someone remove your organs. <laughs> this is <laughs> Really dark for a Christmas episode. <laughs> watching, like, if you're shoved down a table and you're watching your organs get removed one by one, that'd be kind of <laughs> it'd be an unforgettable moment. Pulling out your liver. You can last a couple hours without a liver. You don't have a couple hours left, but they're, I don't think they show them to you. They're all juggling your kidneys. Do, 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 do. Um, but it's lowering your vibrational force, right? It's like really just the most terrible thing you can think of is to be taken to pieces in front of you. And when you're at that level, they zip, suck your soul into the digital space. They didn't say how. <laughs> they like, wow. They have like a, some sort of, they didn't say how. They didn't say like, and they're like, they're like, oh, leave his eyeballs for the last. We want him to see all this stuff. And then also we're going to hook this sci-fi matrix thing up to his brain. He's like, oh, what? Like, I don't know if it's if there is, like, some sort of device that's going... And, like, is sucking his soul out. I don't know. They didn't really explain that part. But if you can lower them to that level. If you were just in the hospital and you were dying of cancer, you couldn't suck their soul out. If you got hit by a car or got shot in the stomach, even if you're like, oh, no, I have to get the groceries. <laughs> I'm bleeding all over the, the Christmas turkey. You're like, oh, no, he's going to eat it now. I've ruined Christmas. You're bleeding to death slowly. That's not going to do it either. It has to be completely inhumane to get you to this point. So apparently that's what's going on in China. <laughs> to, my, to my nine Chinese listeners in mainland China, I apologize if this episode uh, gets you arrested. 
So what they're doing is they're putting them in a digital prison. The goal is to trap souls. This is Satan's digital prison. This is something that he is doing to keep human souls from going to heaven. That is it. That is the main plan is to just trap all these human souls in this digital prison. And according to this theory, it's currently being done to the Uyghurs in China. In Canada, they're doing the MAID program or the medically assisted. It's a just suicide machine. Basically, the government is saying, uh, if you want to kill yourself, we will help you. Which, there's a lot of stuff to say about assisted suicide. I, they, I'll put the article in the show notes. I've been meaning to cover it for a while. There was like a veteran in Canada who needed a wheelchair ramp. And she wrote to the government or to her insurance company saying, I need a wheelchair ramp. And instead, they sent her the paperwork for the assisted suicide program. She was livid. <laughs> she, she was furious. She's like not gonna kill myself of anything you've given me even more of a reason to live how dare you how dare you crazy stuff oh but that's that story in the show notes um but anyways he uh the way that this is laid out is that the satan plan to put everyone not everyone but as many people as he can into this digital soul prison is the uyghurs in china is the canadian assisted suicide group and then he said that the chinese government has agents in western hospitals trying to work on this program in the west as well i don't know why satan's working so closely with the chinese <laughs> that's another question i was like wow he's really going all in on one country here they're not that bad but that, that is a conspiracy theory that's being put out. And to tie it all back in is that Arion found out that GTA 6 was tapping into this soul prison. It's not like these demons. It's not like the Rockstar Games is like, we need to have all these NPCs. Who do we call? China. They got a direct line of Satan. Uh, maybe he'll start this program. No, they're already doing this program. And now these game companies, and I, I would say you could probably spread it out to chat GPT as well. That's not AI. Those are actually, you're talking to humans. That's why the conversations get so weird sometimes. It's human souls that are posing as artificial intelligence. And most of the time you just, you're existing in our world. And the next thing you know, you're on the streets of Vice City. And the, the mind warp would be so complete that you wouldn't ever break through the simulation. But if you did, if all of a sudden you're like, this is nuts. The last thing I remember was I, was I was in Canada. I was visiting Canada and I fell down and I broke my toes. And then a nurse had me sign off some paperwork. And the next thing you know, I'm in Vice City walking around. Where's my family? We break through that programming. I will say the, the big question of like these conspiracy theories, do I believe in this one? I should have some sort of ranking meter. <laughs> you know, 1,100 episodes in, I probably should have figured this out. Interest level, I find it absolutely fascinating. And it's funny because it's something I talked about years ago, hypothetically tying it into the Jeffrey Epstein thing. This whole th idea that you could trap souls. I think in that one, I don't know if it was people's actual souls or just a digital representation of them, I, but it's been years since I listened to that episode. Maybe I'll rerun it. I'll put it as a retro rabbit tonight. Um, I think it's super interesting. Sci-fi concept. The evidence is shaky. <laughs> the evidence is shaky at best. And, and not because I don't believe in any of this stuff, right? I believe that Satan exists. I believe that humans can be purely evil and do horrible things to each other for money or power. The thing that my the thing that I have with this is that even the worst, and maybe I didn't find it, but even the worst accusations against the Chinese government vis-a-vis -vis the Uyghurs is not taking their organs out one by one while they're alive. <laughs> Trust me, there's a lot of articles about them organ harvesting. There's a lot of that stuff, but not to this level. This, in the conspiratorial world, could be true. You do have to have two things for it to work. You have to have magic. You have to have a level of technology we don't have available. 
If you don't believe in either of those things, then the conspiracy completely falls apart, and that's fair. I happen to believe in magic, and I happen to believe that there is technology that is more wondrous and more terrifying than we are led to know. And what's interesting is if there's a digital prison out there right now that's sucking up these souls for Satan and then he lets these huge companies rent the souls because he doesn't care what happens to them. They've been stopped from going to the afterlife. What does he care, right? What does he care what happens to these souls? He's done his job. He's trapped them in the digital world. And the idea, too, I guess I should say this, is that Arion, this is why he's locked up for life. He found out about this, and he's trying to find a way to break open the digital prison. And that's why they had to stop him. That's why they had to lock him up for life. It's actually a genius plan. Again, I think it's particularly evil to take an 18-year-old kid who, at worst, created personal injury, lock him up for life in a hospital. It makes sense, though, because anything he says going forward, well, he's that crazy kid. He's that, quote, severely autistic kid. Well, of course, everything he says is going to be insane. So if he's out there talking about this digital prison, there are real souls trapped in these video games. Can't believe a crazy kid. It's one of those stories that I love where we meld the world. Really, three worlds all come together. Perfect for Christmas, right? The world of the paranormal with Satan. The world of true crime with this young man who's going to spend the rest of his life. They're never going to let him out. They're never going to let him out. I would be surprised if you could find information about him three or four years. They'll either disappear into the system or they'll kill him. I'm sorry, he'll commit suicide. Paranormal, true crime, and then the world of conspiracy. And this is the reason why I started this show, because I love this Venn diagram and stories like this really show all those coming together. Now, I got to be honest, I wish Arion wasn't in prison. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not being like, hey, thanks for the gift, buddy. Like, I don't think he should be in prison. 18 months community service. How about that? I just came up with that off the top of my head. 18 months of community service. Um... But it's that nexus there of those three things coming together. And, you know, the thing is, is, this could be a conspiracy theory. I don't really know how much I believe in it. I believe in the different elements of it. I do believe Satan exists. I do believe that this technology is possible in a sci-fi angle. Like it would be need, it would need to have a higher level of technology that we currently know of. And I do believe that people are evil enough. I don't want to lay all of the feet of China, but I do think that people can be evil enough of every country that I could totally see humans getting on board with this type of sickness, right? If the adrenochrome theory is true, then why wouldn't it? This is just a more digital version of that. Using human misery to trap, to lower a soul's vibrational level so that you could trap it in the digital prison. And then at that point, why not lease them out? They're trapped. You served your purpose. You stopped that soul from reaching paradise. But as you're opening up that new video game this Christmas, you're like, look, Mama, I got it. Madden 2024. Yay. And you sit down, put it in your console, and Fired up. Just remember, just remember, as you're throwing those footballs around and you're watching Joe Montana score a touchdown, like <laughs> Jason, you know, you don't know anything about football, do you? Just maybe pause the game and zoom in. Zoom in. Keep zooming. Keep zooming. And then you see, like, Joe Montana, he's doing a little touchdown dance. I zoom in a little bit more. <laughs> like Jason just gets to the point. Keep zooming, zooming. You'll notice there's a little tear. 
little teardrop. And you notice that that doesn't look like Joe Montana. That looks like a current quarterback. Quarterbacks don't normally score touchdowns. You're looking at that and you go, wait a second. That's so weird. That looks like my neighbor. (laughs) My neighbor who went to Canada the other day. I wonder what happened to him. He said he had a slight cough and he was just traveling through Canada. That's weird. That looks like my neighbor. And you're like, oh, well. And then you zoom out and you start playing again. But then you notice, you notice a little Joe Montana guy, he runs into the stands. And you're like, oh, I got to zoom back in. He zoomed back in. And now the game's not pausing. You're watching him run around the stands. And he's like, where am I? Where's my family? Oh, please, somebody help me. And he's just shouting this out into a sea of endless little sprites jumping up and down going, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this guy's running around, and then you see these two team medics running. <laughs> you see, there's like Mario and Luigi. They're wearing Dr. Mario jackets. They run out and they start dragging away the defective player. And they're like, what? What a weird glitch. Huh. Well, it was just the one time thing you say to yourself. And then when you sit down to play again, if you zoomed in just a little bit more, You'd see on the tens of thousands of people in the stands watching your virtual football game, if you looked at each and every one of them, you notice they would all have a look of sheer panic and a tear-stained face. DeadRabbitRadio at gmail.com is going to be your email address. You can also hit us up at facebook.com slash DeadRabbitRadio. TikTok is at DeadRabbitRadio. DeadRabbitRadio is the daily paranormal conspiracy and true crime podcast. You don't have to listen to it every day, but I'm glad you listened to it today. Have a Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 kiddos. Oh, yeah, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ed wants an apple. Oh, Wilbur. Wilbur in the video game. I don't know what I'm doing here. He's in Red Dead Redemption 2. Mr. Ed got digitized. Don't shoot those horses. Be nice to him. Have a Merry Christmas, guys. I'll see you tomorrow.